so the external females and italy yeah okay so now see this is also termed as pudendum or vulva okay so they are the external females and italy pudendum or vulva okay so now see if you see the location okay so the location so it lies in within the perineal space okay so means superficial to the so urogenital diaphragm okay so that is the region so well you will find the so external female genitalia so let me write here the perineal space so especially superficial perineal space actually okay so in the superficial in the perineal space also two are there okay so the deep is there and the superficial okay so in the deep you will find the this deep transverse perineum okay so in some part of the urethra and other vessels you will find here okay in the superficial perineal space so you will find the location of the pudendum okay and this perineum means so so this perineum so now you have to know about the perineum so just i'll give the introduction so this perineum means so that is the lower part of the okay trunk okay so at the lower limit of the trunk so that lies in the interval between the two thigh okay so that is the region of perineum so that is the lower part of the trunk so which lies in the interval between two thigh so that region is the perineum okay so if you see the uh, lower part of the thigh so between the two thigh so this region is the perineum so here you will find the so genitalia so here in case of female so you will find the external female genitalia is located here okay so now that is the location so if you see the parts of female external genitalia or the pudendum or the vulva so they are the most pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris vestibular vagina vulva vestibular and the greater vestibular gland okay so you should know the name then so we'll go for the individual now okay so this first so that is the mons pubis so here this mons pubis so if you see just in front of the pubic uh, pubic symphysis so you can see the round eminence okay so just in front of the pubic symphysis okay so this round eminence so that is due to the deposition of underlying adipose tissue okay so that is the mons pubis so in the mons pubis so you will find the numerous hair follicles okay and even so this region so there is rich rich this skin so present over here so that is rich in the sweat gland and the sebaceous gland also okay so that is the region so the in front of the pubic symphysis and there you will find some elevated round eminence of skin so that is this eminence is due to deposition of the fatty tissues that underneath the skin okay and the skin present in this region so that so they are they are rich in the hair follicles sebaceous gland and the sweat gland okay just remember this thing next is the next structure is the labia majora okay so this labia majora again so in this diagram also you can see so this fold of the skin so this is the labia majora so here so this is the labia majora so two are there so right and left okay so labia majora so this fold of the skin so here is the labia majora so here is the labia majora so the labia majora so again it is the fold of skin okay so containing the fat okay so now this fold of the skin so this is the skin only so now what is the content so here you will find the adipose tissue or the fat body okay and this labia majora so it forms the boundary of pudendal cleft cleft so now see this space okay so between these two labia majora so this is the pudendal cleft so this is the pudendal cleft so this is space so this boundary so this space is the pudendal cleft so that boundary of this cleft is formed by the labia majora and see see this labia majora two surfaces are there so one surface is so that is the outer surface next surface so this is the inner surface 
so outer surface so it is rich in hair follicles and the sebaceous gland okay and the inner surface okay so you will find the only so you will find the sebaceous gland only so outside you will find the hair follicles okay so how hair follicles are there so this hair follicles so they are present in the outer surface whereas the inner surface rich in the sebaceous gland okay so that will is the sebum okay and see now see the labia major of the both side so they will meet anteriorly also and they will meet posteriorly also isn't it so anteriorly so posteriorly they are meeting here so this side and this side they will meet over here and this also they will meet over here so now see the the labia majora of two side okay so they will meet anteriorly okay so this below the mons pubis and that meeting place is known as anterior commissure and the two labia majora of the two side they will reach posteriorly also and this meeting place is known as posterior and the space okay so that is present between the posterior commissure and the anus now so you will find some spaces space okay so that is present between the posterior commissure and the anal canal okay so now here is the anus is there okay anus is there and this is the meeting place of two major labia majora this is the region of posterior commissure okay now see this space so this interval so this interval is termed as perineum okay so especially so that is the gynecological perineum okay so it is almost 2.5 cm so this space is termed as gynecological perineum okay so gynecological so i will write here g n so that is the gynecological perineum so this interval okay so why the, why this is important so so the region between the posterior commissure okay and then so that is considered as the gynecological perineum so because see so during the normal delivery okay so if the fetal head so that is not easily coming out from the birth canal now see so the gynecologist so they will cut this okay so they will cut okay so this process so that is the epigeotomy they will the, they will cut that so to make this opening large okay so that is considered as the so this region is considered as the gynecological perineum okay so they will not cut directly straight okay so it should not be cut so oblique incision so that is given okay it may be given on the either side okay so either on the left or either on the right so that procedure procedure so that is the epigeotomy okay so during the delivery okay so gynecological perineum so just remember so that is the labia majora so next structure so that is the labia minora so again this labia minora so this is again the fold of skin only so this fold of skin so see you can see so it's the smaller fold of the skin just inside okay so that is the labia minora so again the fold of skin only and see this fold of skin so again it has got a two surface so the outer and the inner surface the both the surface now here ear follicles are not there so both the outer surface and the inner surface they be as the sebaceous gland okay so just remember now again now see this do this large fold of the skin thick fold is the labia majora so this is on the outside okay now see the next fold the inside is the labia minora is there so this small fold over here is, you can see okay so this fold is the labia minora it will go like this and it will go like this also so from the both side okay so this red color fold now see over here you can see the minora over here so labia minora okay so this fold of the skin okay now see this fold so again so this labia minora again there are two okay so from the right and the left they will meet anteriorly also they will meet posteriorly also but now see the meeting process is different okay so different now see this two labia majora so anteriorly so before meeting they will split into two layer okay so one so let me write one layer is this one layer is this so like this 
but posteriorly so without splitting only they will meet okay now see so anteriorly so they will split into two layers so one is the upper layer and next is the lower layer lower layer isn't it so anteriorly so before meeting so they will split into two layers so upper layer and the lower layer so the upper layer so they will meet with the upper layer of the so next Levia minora, and this forms the prepuce of the clitoris. So anteriorly, so upper layer is there. So the two upper layer, and next is the lower layer. So the two upper layer, so anteriorly, okay. So unite to form the prepuce. Prepuce of clitoris. Are you getting? Prepuce of clitoris. Whereas the lower layer, okay, anteriorly the lower layer, so the lower layer, this forms the frenulum. Frenulum of clitoris. Okay. So anteriorly, so they will split. Okay, then upper layer, so they will unite and forms the prepuce of clitoris, and whereas the lower layer, so they forms the frenulum of clitoris. Whereas posteriorly, so the posteriorly, this two layer, okay, so the two labia minora, so unite together to forms the frenulum of labia minora. Frenulum of labia minora. Are you getting? So posteriorly, so that is the frenulum of labia minora. So this meeting place is the frenulum of labia minora. Whereas anteriorly, so this lower portion, so they forms the frenulum of clitoris and this upper layer, so the upper meeting, upper layer of the both sides unite together to form the prepuce of the clitoris. Okay, next, so let's go for the clitoris. Okay, so this clitoris, so that is the, this is homologous with the penis in case of male. So this clitoris, that is the erectile organ only. So it is situated erectile organ, homologous with the Penis and see it is it is situated so in the anterior part of pudendal cleft. Okay, so in the anterior part of the pudendal cleft, so there is the position of the clitoris. Okay, so here also you can see so this erectile organ. Okay, so this is the clitoris only. So the anterior part of the Pudendal cleft, so you will find the clitoris. So now see this clitoris, so it is formed by the two erectile tissue. Okay, so this two erectile tissue, so that is the corpus cavernosa. So this corpus cavernosa, okay, so the two erectile tissue, okay, so actually the root, so that is attached on the pubic arch, okay, so that is the inferior pubic rami, okay, root is there and they will come forward, okay, and this. Corpus cavernous, so they are the two erectile tissue. Okay, so now these two erectile tissue, so they are separated from each other by the fascia. This fascia is the pectiniform fascia. So this, okay, so now see the anterior, so it has got a root. Okay, so now root is attached, and the anterior end, so is the free end, so this free end, so it is like a rounded shape. Okay, so blunt shape with the rounded eminence. Okay, so this rounded eminence. Okay, so along the anterior frame. The corpus cavernosa forms the tubercle like. So that is known as 
glands, clitirodis. Okay, so glands clitirodis. Okay, so just remember. So the anterior fringe, so it's like the tubercle like. Okay, so rounded end. So that rounded end, so it is free, so it's visible end. Okay, so that forms the gland clyti clyti clytirodis. Okay, just remember this thing. So this is the erectile tissue only. And see, in case of female, so this uh, clitoris, so there you will not find the corpus corpus spongiosus. Okay, the you will not find this tissue. But in case of penis, so you will find the two corpus corpus cavernosa and the one corpus spongiosus. And this is spongiosus, so that is pierced by the or the traversed by the urethra. Okay, but in case of female, so you will not find the spongiosus. Corpus spongiosus, you will not find. Just remember this thing. So this is the erectile tissue. So next is the. Let's move forward. So next is the vestibule of vagina. So this vestibule of vagina. Okay. So that is the space between the labia minora. Okay. So the space between the labia minora. So that is the. That is the vestibule, and this vestibule so that will continue, okay, so upward, okay, so with the so the various openings are there in the vestibule, okay, so uh, it will continue, so means so it contains the urethral orifice, it contains the intruders, so that is the vaginal orifice also, okay, so inward and externally, so it communicate with the pudendal cleft and external environment. Okay, so this is the space enclosed by the labia minora. Just remember now, see the various structures in, or opening. So you will see in the vestibule of vagina. So the opening of uh, urethra. So that is the external. So external urethral orifice. So just almost two point five centimeter below. Okay. Or behind clitoris, so you will find the opening of the urethra. So that is the external urethral orifice, and thus behind this, so you will find the opening of the vagina. Okay. So that is the introitus. Okay. So. So even so, in the vestibule, okay. So you will find the opening of greater vestibular gland. Gland. Okay. Now see. So and so numerous glands. So they will open there in the vestibule. Okay. So now see. So let's see the intruders here or the vaginal opening. Okay. Now see this vaginal opening. Okay. So this opening is guarded by guarded by the Thin membrane or thin mucous membrane, so that is the hymen. Okay, so that's hymen, so that guards the that guards the vaginal opening. So let me show you this thing in the diagram. Mm, not given here. Okay, so here over. So so see, so this is the mesora is here. So this is the fold is the labia mesora. This fold is the labia minora, and see. Here is the labia minora. So we are seeing the space. So this is the vestibule. So this is space over here. So this is the vestibule. Now see. So you will find one thin membrane over here. So this is the mucosal fold. Okay. So this mucosal fold is the hymen. Okay. So this hymen. So so this hymen. So it bears the Opening, okay. So the small opening used to be there, okay. But in case of married, what will happen? This hymen, so that is replaced by the tag of mucosal fold, okay. So this tag of mucosal fold, okay, is called as caruncal hymeni, okay. So let me write here the opening. So it's guarded by the, okay. So let me write here. So the vaginal opening. So the thin mucosal. So guards the so this is known as hymen I 
and see in case of married so now how many how many will not it will be tear up and only the tag of mucous membrane called as carunkel hymenae c r u n c u l e carunkel hymenae okay so in married okay so due to the sexual intercourse okay so this hymen may be tear up okay so it will tear up so not only due to sexual intercourse for there are the various cause of tearing of hymen okay so when they will tear up so only the tag of mucous membrane so will be present so that is called as the carunkel hymenal okay so hymen so is the that guards the vaginal opening so that is the intruitus okay just remember this thing okay not so important so regarding this hymen just you have to know now next next is the so now let me show you this thing first here so you can see so here is the clitoris is somewhere here okay so even so you can see the urethral opening small urethral opening is here and here is the intrastructures or the vaginal opening okay so these are the structures and even so the various so gland will open so on the wall of the vestibule okay so you should know that also now the next component of the vest uh, uh, Put in them so that is the bulb of vestibule and the next is the greater vestibular gland. So bulb of vestibule. So even you can see some mass of erectile tissue. This is the over overed mass of the erectile tissue. Now see here is the opening. So vestibule is there, isn't it? So this vestibule on the either side of the vestibule. So you can see this tissue. Okay. So this tissue. So this is the. So this tissue over here. So this is the bulb of vestibule. okay so this is the erectile tissue so that is present on the either side of the either side of the vestibule okay of vagina or which encircle the vaginal and the vaginal and the urethral orifice so let me show you this bulb in this diagram so here you can see so this is the oval okay so erectile tissue again so this erectile tissue so it is present on the either side of so this is the bulb of vestibule so this is the bulb of vestibule okay and it is present on the either side of the vaginal opening and the urethral opening okay and see this bulb of uh, this erectile tissue so that is cover up by muscle so you can see this muscle here okay so this muscle is the bulbo spongiosus muscle just remember this thing so the bulbo spongiosus muscle so that covers okay and next so that is the greater vestibular gland now you can see the greater vestibular gland over here so isn't it so this is the greater vestibular gland with the duct so this duct will open into the vestibule of vagina so this is the greater vestibular gland okay so now opening here okay so here diagram is not given greater vestibular gland okay so now this greater vestibular gland so this gland is homologous with the bulbo so bulbo there is the one gland is there in case of uh, male so that is the bulbo urethral gland okay with the so bulbo urethral gland okay so homologous gland with the bulbo urethral gland the bulbo urethral gland of cooper is there this greater vestibular gland of bartholin okay so this is the name so this gland so that is present in the now this gland is present in the superficial perineal space okay so see now see this gland so it opens in the vestibule of the vagina through the duct okay and this duct so this is almost so 2 cm So two centimeter long. Okay, so this gland has got a two centimeter long duct. So uh, and it will release its secretion through that duct into the vestibule of vagina. Vestibule of vagina. Okay, so gland that is situated in the superficial perineal space. Okay, 
so in the interval and the opening so that will open into the vestibule of vagina in the interval between the hymen and the labia majora yes, sorry labia minora so see here labia minora is there and here is the uh, hymen is there so in between these two regions so this gland will open through the duct okay and it will release the secretion here the homologous gland for this uh, greater vestibular gland of bartholin okay so that is the bulbo urethral gland of cooper in case of male okay so you have to know this thing regarding the female genitalia external female genitalia or the pudendum or the pudendum or the vulva 